Howdy folks, it's Aston once again with another unspoiled review. And so, if you don't know by now, um, that's the name I'm using for these reviews for books where I try not to spoil the, you know, the ongoings of the book, but try to give you still a good enough idea of what happens so that you can decide if you want to read it or not. So, today the book that I'm doing is the Dungeon Anarchist Cookbook, which is the third book in the Dungeon Crawler Carl series. This is becoming a mouthful. Um, it is written by Matt Dinneman and narrated by Jeff Hayes. Um, so this is a, a you know third book in the series. If you aren't interested by now, you probably won't be, but just in case you wanted a heads up, uh, I think this book is even better than the one before. Um, there are some parts of it that I felt like may have been a little bit tedious, but I think the perspective I'm taking on it is that that was how they wanted that to be felt by the main characters. So like the, there are parts of the book where, you know, they did a lot of moving from place to place and it was, you know, felt like it took, you know, time to accomplish that you're like, oh, well, it would have been cool if we had action or something there, but that's like what the main characters went through and it was, I'm sure, annoying and frustrating for them too. <laughs> so, either way, let's get into the review. Um, the book itself, once again, I improved the score on it. I, I said that it was, the book was a 4.875, narration was a 5, overall increase up to 4.9. Uniqueness, um, I left it at a five. Usually I start to reduce the uniqueness of a book as I go, as I, the more I read them. But this particular series, it, it's like every book the narr or the author has brought something new to the table that um, makes it different from the one before. And so in this book, we're getting a very realistic expression for how the aliens, the aliens you know, interact with the humans in a financial sense. So that's what I mean by that is that, you know, by now you know that, you know, this is this whole dungeon making experience is a way for aliens to make money. Um, this is a business for them. And um, in other books in which aliens kind of take over the world and gamify things, they seem and they come across as like, like they have everything together, like they are amazing, like maybe they have some political issues that get exploited, but that they are highly advanced, they have, you know, plenty of funds and money to do whatever they need to, um, but that's just not the case in this series. Like, we see an alien series that is, you know, running out of money, low on budget, and, you know, it's like when you play a game that, had a low budget or you watch a movie that had a low budget there's some there's some flaws right like there's some things that they had to scrimp on and that's what you get to see in this book um and that <laughs> i find that kind of exciting in the sense that when that happens you don't know what's going to go wrong right in a perfect world you can sometimes have a prediction as to how things would go it's like okay well you know well they would want things to be challenging in a particular way and so they would make you know some decisions for that and now, you know, something might break and it could break a whole level and you don't know because, you know, they might not have thought it through or they might have, you know, not paid enough money to reinforce something, you know, who knows, right? And so I gave it a five out of five for uniqueness because making an alien race that's in charge of all of this have just as big of flaws as any other, you know, human race would is uh, very compelling and interesting to me. So, um, then next we have character development. Um, once again, the main character's primary development is in becoming a hero, in becoming a better human. And so, there are, you know, several opportunities in this book where he is left to some extent, a little bit abandoned. So in previous books, he had, to some extent, like a wise old man to be able to use to help guide him. Um, and this book, he has to make a lot of decisions on his own. And because of that, you get to really see him 
make choices for him and not just for the game, you know. So the game would be like, okay, well, every last man for themselves and, you know, and whatnot. And he's like, I'm going to make this decision because I think it's right, regardless of what the consequences are to me. Um, and, and so that's really strong. Um, he does that a couple of times in the very powerful moments. Um, in addition to that, he does become stronger. But the focus of this book was more on this growing of strength of a team and of the new secondary character that we got from the previous book. So that moves us on to secondary characters. It'd be an easy five out of five. Um, there almost is too much focus on secondary characters. If the primary character didn't have a strong of a story in character development, then um, then I might have had to take off points there. But the secondary character is is a lot of focus in this um, in this book, and you really get to see her grow in such a way that it becomes, you know, she starts out to feel very useless. And by the end, she's like one of, you know, the more more useful characters in the series. I won't say, you know, how that happens and, and what the process is for that, but um, it's, it's a very impressive, you know, growth. She does things that, you know, you really like to see in other books where it's like, wow, like that was amazing, like, oh my gosh, those are really big, powerful moments. And um, and you get all of that. And so secondary characters, easy five out of five. Um, and this one, because we get to follow and see that secondary character growth, we really get to start to exploit the magic system. And that's where things start to get interesting for me when it comes to magic. And so the previous, the, first, the main character is more about crafting and not so much about magic and his crafting, it's like his problems are kind of solved for him and so we don't get to see the intricacy of the system. And this, um, with the secondary character, her abilities would definitely rely on the magic side of things. And so to being able to like read the descriptions for what she has and exploit them to make her into a more powerful and effective character has been has been pretty great. And getting to see the intricacy of the magic system that lets that happen um, bumped it up to a four and a half out of five. You know, once again, like that's still not the goal of the book, but it, it really helped me in this to enjoy the magic system for what it was. And so I gave it a four and a half out of five for that. Um, Dynamic voicing and vocal cast. Jeff Hayes is, you know, once again, a fantastic narrator. Um, I've enjoyed everything I've heard him do. All of the characters in this book are unique. They have their own highs and lows. Um, when someone is confused, you can tell it. Um, mortified, you can tell it. Devastated, you can tell it. And you can feel it, and it, and it adds to the book. There's nothing more to say there. Um, this book is 18 and up just because of moral decisions that ha that are made that are um that had to be struggled through and you know if you're a kid in high school um it would be good for you to have someone to talk to about some of these decisions instead of just you know listening to them and, and not having any you know input from you know history and culture and your particular, you know, family's belief systems. And so, um, 18 and up for that. Humor, still very high. Romance, still none. Um, action, there is a ton of action. Gore, there's quite a bit. Um, um, when you could indicate that someone was almost bathing in blood, um, that's like a very high level of gore. And so, um, I felt like it was appropriate to the situation. You know, I, I never felt like it was gory for the sake of being gory. I felt like it was appropriately gory, but it's there. Um, and, you know, once again, very high engagement. It was, um, I was sad when the book ended and I didn't have one to listen to immediately afterwards. Um, hoping that the fourth audiobook comes out. I think that it's already, the written version is already out, but we'll see. 
And that's it. Um, hope you enjoyed the uh, the review. And you know, like, subscribe, comment. Let me know what you would want to hear. If there's anything you would want to see differently. And that's it. Um, there's links below for things that I you know find interesting. I won't go into that today. It's up to you if you're interested. Um, <laughs> see ya. <laughs> Bye.